Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Volkswagen T Rock, and straight away we are going to open the engine bay of this vehicle. And as you can see, the engine bay is not really compact, but it does get a nice and clean layout, of course. And there is insulation right there as well. There is no badging, which is kind of surprising. Usually people put badging like the VW logo could have been there. Maybe we open this, we can see an Audi logo or a Skoda logo as well. Jokes aside, this car looks really nice in this yellow color. And the design is very VW-ish. In fact, the lights get the LED treatment. These are LED lights. And this is the beautiful chrome treatment, which gives it a nice big face. Now, LED DRLs are here, lower down. This is the fog lights, which are actually halogens. And this also turns into the indicator. Yeah, that's right. So you can see that on this side, the LED DRL is shut and it's showing the indicator of the vehicle. You get front parking sensors, nice big VW logo and a striking car you also get a fake skid plate up front of course this is a front wheel drive coming to the side of the car you realize it is very compact a car yes the size is very compact for the price unfortunately meanwhile the wheel size is big enough because the car is small so yes the wheels don't look small at all these are 17 inches the tire size happens to be 215 17s the alloy wheel design is also pretty nice you get this body cladding running throughout the car for that SUV appeal. In fact, VW is also given it rear discs, which is a nice touch. Coming to the side, like I was telling you, it kind of looks very hatchbackish. It is actually based on the Volkswagen Golf. Coming straight ahead, you see there is Volkswagen branding right there. B pillar gets a piano black finish. You get the chrome treatment, which extends all the way till the A pillar. And the roof is gloss black on all the variants. You also get these roof rails, which are obviously not functional. There is the antenna, which is kind of small, but this chrome line tries to add to the premium appeal of the car. And of course, it's got request sensors. You just put your hand in, the car unlocks. There's no button to press here. The outside rear view mirrors of this car are heated, of course, and the indicator is also placed on the outside rear view mirror. This also gets the gloss black finishing. So a lot of play with colors just for that funky appeal of this car. And at the rear, it again looks very VW-ish. The bumper is actually finished in black and there is a fake skid plate here as well. In fact, there is storage space right there. No, there is no storage space. I'm just kidding. And T-Rock is proudly placed right below the VW logo. Rear parking sensors, there's a reverse parking camera here. Yeah, there is a reverse parking camera which opens up when you get into reverse. Meanwhile, this is the reflector of the car. Parking sensors are there as well. The lights actually look quite nice. Very well done. Might remind you of some Audi cars as well, but unfortunately, the exhausts are fake AF. Yeah, these are fake exhausts, but you can keep some stuff here that will obviously fall down. The rear exhaust of the car is here. It actually gets dual exhaust ports. However, outside they've put this fake exhaust treatment for reasons best known to them. Now you see the angle of the windscreen. It is very raked and gives it sort of a hunchback look at the rear, but this isn't a car which has size on its side. Although VW has given it a lot of cuts and creases, you can see that line going from here. I mean, it does have a lot of design elements in spite of the fact that it's kind of very squarish. Anyways, let's open the boot of the vehicle, which means that you just click the VW logo like this and there opens the boot. Now, the boot isn't that large. It's actually 445 liters, which is technically bigger than what we see in the Tata Harrier and also the Hyundai Creta. However, it just kind of feels small. The spare wheel isn't an alloy. In fact, the spare wheel is a smaller size tire, which happens to be 205, 55, 16. But all the materials for the spare tire or rather to change the tire is right in between. Well packaged as well. First aid kit, VW manual in a nice pouch as well. This is actually around 360 pages and that is the warning triangle. Now, there is a hook here. There's a hook here as well in order for you to mount something. Rear seats obviously recline, but there's a hook here as well. Boot actually kind of feels on the smaller side. <laughs> Dummy button. That's kind of weird. What does this warning actually mean? I have no clue whatsoever. Let's shut this and get to the rear of the car, rather the rear seat of the vehicle. First and foremost, build quality is really very nice. Doors close with a proper third. Storage space is decent. Door pockets have decent space actually. And of course, all the power windows are one touch down and one touch up as well. This is at the end of the day of VW, so you expect that and more. Now you see the seats have a good recline angle, but there's not much space on offer as such. And there's a massive hump in the center as well. Because of this massive hump, three people are not comfortable at the rear. There is a 12 volt charging socket, of course. And uh, this is a nice treatment for God knows what. 
This, of course, are the AC vents of the car. Let's turn them off so they don't make noise. No scooped out seat back. Leg room isn't that great here. And knee room is also not that great. Although, you know what? Headroom isn't that great either. However, they have scooped this out. Can you see this? They've scooped this out because of the sunroof mechanism. Obviously, headroom goes for a little bit of a toss when you have a panoramic roof. But this scoop out actually helps the headroom. Now, there are three headrests at the rear. All of them adjustable. This one seems like an afterthought because of the color, but I'm just joking. It has this tri-color treatment for the leather, which actually looks nice and funky. This car is all, all about being funky. You've got twin cup holders here in the center armrest, and you can obviously remove them. And you can position how big or small you want the cup holders to be. That's also a nice touch. Now, if you want to access the boot, you can do that as well. So yeah, you can access the boot from here. Pretty cool, huh? All these features. Like I told you, adjustable headrest at the rear. There's a hook, there's a handle. There are light placements here on both the sides. In fact, there's a hook and handle here as well. The dashboard actually looks quite nice. Yeah, very appealing dashboard. Good quality levels, excellent build quality. What you expect from a VW car. Recline angle is nice. Obviously, it's got Isofix child seat mounts as well. But yeah, leg room could have been better. Knee room could have been better. And the cabin, although decent size for three people to sit in, there's just no space for the center passenger, even though we have got a center headrest, which happens to be adjustable. Now, of course, you can recline the seats in order to increase the boot carrying capacity. That's how the seat reclines. Quite easy, quite practical in that sense. Let's close this. Unfortunately, the car does miss out on a lot of equipment you would expect from a car of this price and size, which we will come to in a bit. However, let's just open the seat oh, here as well. So here I press a button and there the seat reclines. This is the 60-40 split, increasing the boot carrying capacity massively. So there is lumbar adjustment for the driver. Unfortunately though, there is no electric adjust here. All the power windows are obviously having one touch up and down. These are the controls for the outside rear view mirrors. This is to lock and unlock the vehicle. And this is the control for the headlights. Actually, you just push them. Okay, we will pull it out once, front fogs, twice, Rear fogs, automatic headlights, automatic wipers. You see, there is a dead pedal there. This is obviously an automatic. This is to open the hood of the car. If the door is closed, the hood will not open. Uh, that is a safety mechanism. Seats are actually very comfortable, nice, well bolstered, and look cool as well. And the doors, hear this. Proper thud when you close the door of the vehicle. So, dashboard might look nice, but unfortunately, it has a ton of hard plastics lot of hard plastics and there's this safe and sanitized sticker which actually works as a vaccine inside the car to kill all sorts of viruses just kidding the glove box is decent size you also get a tire inflator yeah i don't think this comes with the car but it's present in our particular car sd card slots there's an sd card slot here as well and a cd changer too so yes it's got plenty of multimedia options as well but the plastics are really on the hard side Steering wheel will remind you of other VW cars, of course. It gets a flat bottom as well. And the steering wheel buttons are similar to what you've seen on other VW cars. So yes, this is to browse through the instrument cluster. And this instrument cluster has a lot of information to offer. Of course, I've shown all that and more with the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. So yeah, you can just browse through this. All the regular information you would expect, you can come back as well. And this is a loaded instrument cluster. Plus, it's a very nice looking unit too. You can obviously press this button, view button, and you can change the way the cluster looks. Again, this happens to be a 10.25 inch instrument cluster. It's an all digital unit. It's similar to one which we have seen in Skoda cars as well. And it's so beautiful. This is actually what I put right now is the acceleration G-force meter. So when you accelerate, this thing moves around that blue lines. It's kind of small, not that funky as such. I've actually put this to distance to empty. And you can obviously customize it in a million plus ways. This is obviously for the lane departure warning. A lot of telltale lights. And this is obviously for the fuel meter. This is for the temperature meter. So a nice instrument cluster without a doubt. These are the controls for the wipers. The wipers work really well. Lot of spray on offer. Oh my God, that is a ton of spray in the wipers, rather in the washer fluid. Coming to the rear, you obviously get a rear wiper as well. Again, lot of spray on offer. The wiper actually covers a big portion. It is much bigger portion that is being covered than compared to what is on the Tata Harrier's rear wiper. This happens to be an eight inch screen. It's very fluid, nice to use. It gets Android Auto, it gets Apple CarPlay. And there's something known as images as well. You can see images. Okay, you have to put a source file. Of course, you just cannot see any random image you want. Getting into vehicle, that's where the action lies. This is the Think Blue Trainer. It's actually going to train you to think bluer by driving more efficient. And all the driving data, all that information is here, which is very coolly done. Of course, the best thing here is the fact that there is something known as active info display with which you can change how you want the information to be shown in the instrument cluster. 
that is also very nice there's the classic view i love the classic view so the classic view is basically classic it has the gear position indicator in the center of the tachometer and the digital speedometer inset of the analog speedometer which happens to be digital itself so it's kind of weird and awkward i'm just kidding let's get into app so it has got some app connect system as well you can do a lot of information and get a lot of stuff here as well i mean this is a nice and slick unit but it is prone to fingerprints it also gets a tire pressure monitoring system which gives you a lot of information about the tire pressure of course and you can browse it through this as well so very loaded nice fonts extremely clear to read to this is obviously for the auto stop start system of the vehicle this is for parking sensors it's got obviously front and rear parking sensors these are the controls for the air conditioning it's got heated seats too which are of absolute no use in the indian climate right now and it's got dual zone climate control system as well there's storage space right here two usb ports as well and a 12 volt charging socket as well this is the engine start stop button right there below the center console and the center console itself is tilted a bit towards the driver it gets a piano black finish you get sort of a different sort of a finish here as well now, the car i drove in germany had the blue finish which was matching with the exterior so i believe it matches with the exterior this finish in the center of the dashboard there's storage space here in fact you can easily keep two cup holders and a small cup as well this is where you actually keep the key of the car if you want it that's actually a honda key this is the electric parking brake and this is the auto hold function of the car below the front center armrest there's storage space but it's not that big enough meanwhile you can obviously recline the front center armrest ahead and behind in accordance to your comfort auto dimming inside rear view mirror these are the controls for the sunroof and the lights of course so this is the light of the car which is very bright and this is to open the sunroof of the car it gets a panoramic sunroof but the sunroof is in the biggest in terms of size it's kind of on the smaller size could have been bigger for sure let's shut that for a moment and it's got these sos service and information buttons here on the top too now here you obviously get a mirror along with a light same is the case here as well you get a mirror along with a light and it actually tells you the passenger airbag warning here whether it's on or off this car also gets paddle shifters you can see that yeah paddle shifters are plasticky and automatic headlights automatic wipers all that and more stocks feel really solid in fact the controls in this car are really very nicely judged even the quality levels the finishing on all the buttons is super duper awesome this is obviously the hazard light switch of the vehicle the reverse parking camera is nice as well however it doesn't get adaptive guidelines which is a bummer that you can see the car this is obviously for the front and rear parking sensors giving you 360 degree parking sensors now the cool bit about this infotainment system is that when you actually get close it starts showing you more functions so here you see that is absolutely cool done now obviously this is something which is there almost on every vw car as well so there's nothing different let's listen to an audio right away audio quality is decent actually it's good enough now see every time i get my hand near it opens up another display which is again very cool done quality of the car is super duper awesome let's turn off the vehicle right now i'm not used to it being here because no vw review is complete without this i'm sure all of you are waiting for it so let's get to it locking the car and now we are going to be opening the windows of the vehicle with the remote itself and there all the windows come down now this is a feature on almost every vw car not almost in fact every vw car has this feature pressing this button and there the windows also shut now does this work with the sunroof as well to try that we're going to actually open the sunroof and see now you see whenever any door is open it actually shows you in the display as well so very nice display in that sense very premium and of course the design and all is super nice too the instrument cluster is just mind bogglingly phenomenal but what is not is the pricing of this car so let's just do one thing let's shut the car and let's see if that happens so you're going to just lock the car keep this button pressed will the sunroof close yes of course it will and that is a super cool feature let's get driving right away all right we are all set to go which means getting into reverse gear and let me tell you that it is so easy to park this car and the graphics are okay we already spoken about the graphics and everything and as usual we are at a usual spot where i think everybody has come to mcdonald's today to eat which is kind of weird and awkward because there seems to be a traffic freaking jam and how am i going to exit from here absolutely no idea anyways there is a Volkswagen Tiguan on the right the five seater version not the all space i'm yet to see an all space the all space which i saw was obviously the car which i was testing on our usual bad road you can see that it does feel a bit on the stiffer side and it does move around a bit as well that is because of the stiffness actually the ride quality feels very similar to the european version which i drove in germany so yeah it is still the european spec version suspension they haven't tweaked it it's a cbu import obviously 
and yeah that stiffness is so much felt right now and it's like a seltos meetup or what there's one here there's one here the blue one looks really nice somehow so in terms of driving this car it is very easy to drive specifically because the steering is actually on the lighter side and there is a massive traffic jam today because there's just too many people yeah that tgdi motor can be put to shame by this turbo engine yeah the horn sounds nice but it doesn't affect anybody at all very wrong time we have come today for the video can't be bad as things are dumb ass so right now if you see that rear view mirror is turned down because you are in reverse once you hit 20 km per hour that will automatically go up We are in a traffic jam. Can you believe this? The block starts with a traffic jam. That Baleno has this thing on the front, which actually adds 307 horsepower divided by zero, of course. Anyways, on the bad roads, no issues whatsoever with the T-Rock or anything. It's so stiff, you know. It's actually moving everywhere and more. Easy to drive, easy to maneuver, easy to twirl the steering wheel. It's on the lighter side somehow, but weighs up brilliantly well at higher speeds. Neha is getting worried. There's a truck coming ahead. That's well, not a truck. problem. Whatever That's you see, JCB. We have finished the vlog on that. You can click here to see that vlog. Anyways, so the T-Rox engine is so drivable. It's so refined. It's so smooth. It's so silent. You can barely hear anything inside the cabin at the moment. It is just silence. Absolute mad silence. I think it's going to take us three days just to get out of this lane because people are just going berserk. And how are we going to go from here? Okay, car is coming from behind as well. And thankfully, this guy is heading inside. Otherwise, you would be. Oh, please stop, 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 stop. See, yes, stop, see, yes, stop. Let me go, please, 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 please. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know what to do, man. There is just so much traffic. But finally, we are out of this place. And I don't think makes makes sense to go to McDonald's or around it also on a Friday okay. evening. What is up with you guys? Anyways, here we are onto the main road. And let me tell you that city drivability is great. But get into the gas and the motor absolutely pulls really nicely. Feels so eager. This engine is absolutely phenomenal. So what you're going to do is we're going to get into sport mode. We are in sport mode right now. Onto the gas. revs all the way beautifully to 6 and a half thousand rpm with a lot of enthusiasm in fact the punch on this motor is so good that every time you get into the gas there's an instant push it does not hesitate to downshift at all that is the level of performance on offer it's surreal this engine this 1.5 liter tsi evo motor produces 150 horsepower between 5000 to 6000 rpm and 250 newton meters of torque between 1500 to 3500 rpm so not really a wide torque band when you compare it to other tsi engines but good enough that's the reason the mid range is absolutely strong the mid range is super punchy on this car it really pushes hard in the mid range but the good thing is that there's no flat spot in the power delivery at all traction control off asr off air conditioning off as well left foot on the brake okay we are already in sport mode revving the motor it doesn't rev at all and absolutely no wheel spin on offer yeah it was struggling for traction a bit but the tire grip is phenomenal the way it puts power down is amazing and the issue with all dsg boxes is that initial get go is not there when you get hard into the gas it doesn't accelerate so fast because they've dialed in that delay just so that the gearbox does not blast away obviously over a period of time so yeah initial get go isn't that fast and that's the reason why it actually robs away time from 0 to 100 km per hour this goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 9.5 seconds which is quite quick for a car of this size and this engine as well with a four cylinder engine that's not an issue at all what i find is that this gearbox this dsg unit is absolutely phenomenal okay it's a seven speed unit it is super quick with shifts it's so ready for downshift every time you want to downshift it's there and it loves to rev it also sounds nice if you can hear the sound of this engine it really sounds nice now when compared to the manual the manual of course has a soul which i had driven in germany no manual is available here in the indian market there's just one variant of this car available here but This DSG actually is very convenient, fantastic with shift, super refined. The engine is also very refined. Smoothness and refinement is over the top in this car. You can barely hear anything, and it gets sporty once you get past the mid range. Around 4,000, 5,000 RPM, it gets really loud and sporty, and it loves to downshift when you need a downshift. It loves to upshift. At six and a half thousand RPM, right now we're obviously driving in sport mode. There is no driving mode as such. There's only modes for the gearbox. There is the regular drive mode. There is the sport mode, which we are in right now. If you want to get into manual mode, well, just touch the paddles and it gets into manual mode as well. 
so giving you not complete manual control of things because it will still upshift even if you don't want an upshift it will still upshift because it will not hold on to a gear but performance is so breathtaking in fact this car is lighter than the skoda karok with which it shares a lot of its things including the engine of course the chassis as well and the result is that this is slightly faster because it weighs i think around 50 kg lesser see i mean hear the sound of the motor it's really nice and loud and what am i even talking i don't even know okay the thing is that the ride quality was on the stiffer side at lower speeds but it is beautifully flat as you increase the pace bringing in the whole germanness to this car look at the way it is so poised at high speeds i have driven this car in germany left hand drive version on the autobahn with this restriction at a speed of 216 km per hour it does not budge it is so stable even on winter tires now we are obviously on summer tires or regular all weather tires and it just feels so stable so agile and so composed it's absolutely mind blowing oh my god what an engine absolutely phenomenal engine this engine is the highlight of this package without a doubt it is so smooth refined punchy and having proper torque and power spread throughout the rev range there is not a single flat spot in the whole power delivery there is not a single rpm where you would be like mm, yeah it's a little lethargic it's not it is okay someone's put a maruti 800 in a truck and going that's crazy anyways it says eco tape move the selector level to position d no i am don't want your eco tapes right now i want to drive it in position s only m right now we were in m3 now we are in s3 now we are in d4 because it decided to upshift now i've just left the accelerator pedal letting the car cruise on its own and when i do that it says two cylinder mode so it deactivates two cylinders because it has something known as act act which is active cylinder technology it shuts two of the cylinders to improve fuel economy in terms of fuel economy this should return somewhere between 12 to 13 km per liter which is quite respectable because the car itself is on the lighter side this one weighs 13 50 kg it feels light it feels nimble it feels agile somehow it really feels so easy to drive and nimble on its feet yet having a lot of grip great poise and extremely impressive high speed stability i can go on and on about the high speed stability of this car because it is so good ground clearance is decent although this is a smallish sort of a crossover still you have got a good view of what's around and the driving position is such that you don't feel you're in a small car at all you actually feel you are in a bigger car than you actually are braking performance is stellar brakes are super strong show for the stopping power absolutely stops dead in its track without any issue so you're going to get into sport mode little bit of a window open doesn't rev but yeah it doesn't rev that's the problem that's why i would prefer a manual and here we go i don't know if you could hear that but uh, yeah the engine is really very sweet sounding such an beautifully tuned engine of course this 1.5 liter tsi engine is from the same tsi family of engines which also consists of the 1 liter tsi the 1.4 tsi the 1.2 tsi as well so from the same family of engines and the performance levels are super impressive as well in fact this engine is coming from the 1.4 tsi which also powers the audi a3 the audi a4 the skoda octavia 1.4 so similar series of engines but of course this is a new unit altogether and is so impressive in terms of refinement and performance you will just fall in love with this car just because of the engine the performance the way it pulls speed is mind blowing and uh, this would hit more than 200 km per hour on the speedometer i mean it actually hits almost 220 km per hour on the speedometer which i experienced in germany because this engine has so much grunt such a small engine having so much performance punching way over its weight because obviously it's got turbo charging it's got direct injection as well and it's a phenomenal motor i think i can make one video just on this engine that's how impressive it is now this car does not get a speed alarm system either actually it does get a speed alarm system our particular test car is not having one right now because i believe they do not get time to put that speed alarm system but i like it this way you see over rumblers it's just so composed it doesn't let you hear much inside tire noise is there slight bit and the wind noise is also well contained but then you start to hear a lot of the wind noise from the a pillar at higher speeds but keep that aside this is a very well put together car extremely well built and extremely composed feels like a big car it is wide trust me it is wide for its size and because of which i think it feels super duper planted as well this dg box is absolutely stunning in words i cannot express in right now braking performance is stellar the steering wheel is not having the most feedback as such it does weigh up at higher speeds but doesn't feel connected because there is some artificial weighing up and stop looking at the skoda superb neha that's long gone that story is over now you are done and dusted literally with the skoda superb 
look at the freaking composure of this car. It is so impressive a vehicle. I love the Volkswagen T Rock. The Volkswagen T-Roc is so eager with changing directions. It is very eager, very agile and body roll is well contained as well. So this car really is a driver's delight and I've used words like really so many times that I just feel like stupid actually. So body control, fab, changing lanes, no problem. In fact, it's got lane change technology also basically it indicates when you're changing a lane. Forget that, it's able to read the road also and tell you that if you're crossing a lane, so it pulls you back in. Yeah, that system actually works flawlessly while you keep fighting with the steering wheel. So we're gonna try that for a moment right now. So here we are, I'm going a little left there. Yeah, it pulls you back. It is so well engineered, this car. It's an absolute beauty. We are going a little rightish. See, you see the steering is keeping me in my lane. It's able to center it and it just won't let you switch lanes unless and until you decide to do so. So here we are going left. Look at the way this system works. Okay, we're going right. Wow, what a beautiful technology on this car. And that's not all. It's also got active braking technology, basically. Look at this work. My goodness, I am so impressed. Okay, so it's got active braking technology. If there is someone ahead of you and you come close to that person, then it is able to automatically apply brakes as well and warn you too. What it does is basically, it when you are going at a speed and you're approaching something, it's able to recognize that there's something ahead of you and it automatically applies brakes. It shows you this red warning also in the instrument cluster, right in the center in the multi-information display. That is also super awesome. The way this whole system works, there you see, that's how it works. Yeah, it's not about you slowly coming behind someone and being like, okay, now get alert. It is able to recognize that, warn you and apply brakes too. Beautiful system, very well engineered. This car is so freaking awesome. I love it. I know you're paying a lot more money because CBU, of course, for this car over, say, a Jeep Compass, because the Jeep Compass actually justifies its price tag with its size. This car does not, but it rides and handles beautifully well. Its performance is mind blowing. This engine is so good. I do not actually miss a diesel engine. I never thought I would say that, but I don't miss the 1.5 liter TDI motor anymore because of this 1.5 liter TSI. The 1 liter TSI is hugely impressive in the Polo and the Vento. This 1.5 liter TSI Evo engine is supremely impressive in the T-Roc and of course in the Karoq too. Meanwhile, the 2 liter TSI engine is supremely impressive in the Tiguan All Space. So Volkswagen's petrol engines are so freaking amazing absolutely get my respect for making such brilliant engines refinement levels performance everything the dhg does not heat up okay if i want manual control of things i obviously have steering mounted paddles here downshift revving the nuts no problem this car can do six and a half thousand rpm every day all day and not flutter one bit because it just feels at home in that sense i can obviously take manual control of things by shifting the gear lever using the triptronic function and shifting gears it's such a fab thing. I love the engine. I love the gearbox. I love the DSG. And usually I never praise the DSG, but I'm so impressed with this T-Roc. I do not have words to describe how well engineered, what an overall all-rounder package it is. Yes, it is on the smaller size. Yes, it doesn't have the most features. Yes, it doesn't you know, justify its price, which happens to be an obnoxious rupees, 25.65 lakhs. Yeah, 25.65 lakhs for this car only because it comes via the CBU route and Volkswagen obviously had to get something till their India made SUVs on the MQB A0 iron platforms come. This is based on the MQB platform and the MQB platform, the engine, the powertrain, the gearbox, all of them come together to shine and show the T-Roc to be an absolutely phenomenal machine. Now, obviously power is channeled to the front wheels, but there's so much grip and the road is also wet that you didn't hear any sort of loss of traction. Traction control is off obviously at the moment, but you also get the option of all wheel drive, although not in India, globally it's also available with all wheel drive. Why is the price so high? Because it comes via the CBU route. So obviously it's a fully imported model, but the price is also higher because actually the price is 19.99 lakhs ex showroom, okay? On that, there's a lot of money which has to be paid to get the car on road. Specifically speaking, the registration or rather the RTO charges is almost double than what it is for a made in India car because this is a CBU import. So the RTO charges also increase dramatically. And just to verify the same, I was actually checking the Tata Harrier XMA variant, but 
the order price for that is almost 2 lakhs cheaper to not 2 lakhs 2 to 3 lakhs cheaper because the registration charge is almost half of what is for the t dog yeah so that's the reason why it is so expensive volkswagen should actually make this car in india would make a lot more sense right now it doesn't make a lot of sense but if you are the kind who really appreciates build quality, safety, performance, powertrain, gearbox, all these factors, you're going to love this car. Just do not expect to get your money's worth because that's something where the T-Dog cannot offer you much. It can offer you a smile on your face when you're driving it to any sort of road, be it in the city, be it on the highway, be it on bad road. It just feels so good. Ground clearance is also ample enough. And from the driver's seat, you don't feel that you're on a car which is so small. You do feel that the car is justifying its price tag, but it doesn't because the features are lacking. The size is not going to rub your ego at all. It's not going to be any ego massage in that sense. But get onto the gas and this T-Rock absolutely shows you why a Volkswagen is a Volkswagen is a Volkswagen. And that's something to really appreciate about this car. The T-Rock is an absolute gem of a car. Unfortunately, the price puts it out of reach of most. And because of the lack of features when compared to even the Kia Seltos or the Hyundai Creta, you realize, mm, well, that's the import tax you're paying. And on that rather disappointment, although Volkswagen had managed to sell the 1,000 units they had allotted to India and they obviously bought the car under the CVU rule wherein you can get 2,500 units a year, homologation is not needed. Just for that stopgap measure, yeah, bro, I will shift to D if you want for the eco tip, but stop with this eco tip. Let's just downshift manually. Oh my god, what a fast shifting gearbox. Absolutely mind blowingly quick gearbox. Doesn't hesitate, doesn't be like mm, I'll fumble. No, 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 no. You want to shift here, it is even before you think about it. And on that terrific engineering, it's time to end. If you like this vlog, you know what you have to do. Give it a thumbs up, that's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye bye, take care.